friends, how are you? I have really missed catching up with you. I am Michelle, and this is my channel, Penny's Daughter Shares, where I primarily talk about cross stitch. However, today we will be talking some quilting, and I'm very excited to share what I have for you. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you see, and if you do, please like and subscribe below. If you're coming back, thank you so much for spending time with me again. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. You may also hit the bell down below and it will notify you, or I'm sorry, YouTube will notify you when I post a new video. Let's see, so how should we catch up? Well, first of all, it is a PJ floss tube day. If you, I think I've worn these PJs before. So here I am again. Uh, it's been a crazy few weeks at my house. Um, we'll start by saying Jeff has been off for one week so far of the second half of April that he was taking off once busy season was over. And it's been really nice. However, it hasn't gone quite the way I had planned in my head. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's how he had his time planned either. Um, so I'm going to have to back up just a little to sort of explain this. And I'll try to be quick because I know you're here more to talk about stitching and quilting or listen to it but I thought I'd give you a quick update. We moved into our house in March of 2020. And yes, we moved in, had movers move us in. And I think it was two days later that the state of Michigan essentially shut down because of COVID. So thank goodness we got in our house when we did, because I'm not sure how we would have survived in our old house. This one is much larger and much more space for the five of us to live, to cohabitate, especially when, you know, everyone was stuck at home and needed to do school and work and whatever from home. This house, we built a new house or had a new house built. And the reason we decided on a newly built house was one, to be able to choose kind of our finishes and the design of it. Um, the other reason was because we would have all new sort of systems, you know, new windows, new roof, new heat, new air conditioning, new garbage disposal, new water heater, all of those things. Everything was new. And so hopefully, I mean, the plan was we wouldn't need to worry about those things for a while. <laughs> well didn't quite work out as we planned. <laughs> so before I get to that part, uh, like I said, new construction, we have a walkout basement and uh, we needed to put a deck on of some sort. We decided on a three seasons room, which was built. And I don't even remember exactly when that got started late last fall. I believe so. And it's pretty much done. It needs some painting and then it will be done, I think. And I'll have to show it to you sometime when it's done. And right now it's a mess and nothing to show you. Um, but I'm really excited to have that space. And then Jeff really wanted to get the basement done and decided that everything was going well with the Three Seasons room. Let's do the basement and add to our living space. So we've been working through that. Um, I can remember during like holiday time, so the end of December when Jeff would have been off work for a little bit of time, he decided to clear out the basement and prepare it for getting it finished off. So my dining room is just stacked with boxes that were stored in the basement. You know, Christmas decorations and 
I'll call them kids scrapbook file boxes, that kind of stuff, okay? It's all piled in my dining room or what is supposed to be a dining room. It's a storage area. And I get, I've gotten to look at that for months. <laughs> and so anyway, we've been working through this. Okay, basement process. It is the drywall is hung. And in the past few days, the, um, we've had, you know, someone's been in to do like the drywall finishing. So the mud and tape. So, such things. All right. Friday night, uh, and it was about 10 o'clock at night because Jeff and I were just talking about going to bed and we heard this weird sound like something fell in the basement. And he went down there <laughs> to check to see what it was. Because at first I said, is the garage door closed? Because it kind of sounded like maybe someone got in our house even. Went down to the basement and found water. <laughs> yep. Um, so, okay. Fortunately, it barely skimmed a bit of the drywall. So, no big deal there. It was mainly on the floor. He figured out it was from the water heater. So, we had no water heater. And he tried to figure something out. Long story short, we went through Saturday, had someone come out, hoping it could get fixed. Basically, the person said, no, we can't fix it. You'll have to get a new one. And you might be asking, well, isn't this under warranty? Probably, but then how long is that going to take to get a hold of somebody to try to get it replaced? I don't, guys. <laughs> and I don't do well with all this, like interference with my space. <laughs> so trying to remain calm and, you know, we have all this construction going on. Plus now this happens. So to make the very long drawn out, not very fun story, we are supposed to be getting a new water heater on Monday morning. So in the meantime, we're going to have gone, what, two and a half days without hot water. So that's been interesting, to say the least. And meanwhile, Jeff keeps monitoring it to make sure, you know, we don't aren't getting any other big messes. So, oh, and they can't really, the person that came out to check the water heater couldn't tell us for sure what happened. They think maybe it rusted through. It's three years old and it's rusting through. Well, I guess it happens. That's what we were told. <laughs> oh, so, oh, that's a long story. I didn't mean it for it to be that long. I want to catch up with you and have fun and not talk about this craziness. So, um, anyway, that is the life catch up. Now let's talk stitching and quilting and crafting instead. FFO Challenge 2023, which if you've been here before, you already know this, but I'll refresh your memory <laughs> that Jen of Two Tall Stitchers, and she is Jen Quilter at, on Instagram, and I got our heads together and decided that this was something we wanted to do this year. And it has been giving both of us a lot of motivation and encouragement and a lot of you. And we're having, still having so much fun seeing everyone else's FFOs. They're unique and wonderful and amazing. And so many of them, it's awesome. So again, I know I say this, I think every time I talk about this, I want to say thank you to everybody who's participating in whatever way it is, whether you're commenting and encouraging people or you're sharing your own FFOs, all of it. It's wonderful. So thank you so much. Now, I don't have any FFOs of my own to share with you today. After March Madness was 
pretty crazy. I got a lot done and I am up to 31 total FFOs for the year. I decided that April was a great time to sort of give myself a break because I did do a lot of FFO work in March, which was really fun, but also my personality, I do a lot of pressure on myself to accomplish certain amounts of things. And if I didn't take a step back and relax a little bit this month, I probably would kind of fizzle out and not continue to accomplish my goals. So anyway, April was about getting back to other things that I wanted to work on. But I do have an FFO to share today and it is, but it's not mine, but it's very special. And I want to say that I am honored that Josie decided to share this with me. She sent me an email with the explanation and a picture and I'll get that up in just a second. Um, I asked her if it was okay that I share with you also on my floss tube and she said yes. So I'm very glad that I get to share it with you too. Um, so if I'm a bit emotion, extra emotional as I'm sharing this, it's you'll understand why in a minute, but also that it, I'm just so, like I said, I felt such a strong, I was so honored that Josie trust, I felt like she trusted me to share all of this and that I was even a small piece of why this got done. It's like, that's what, the challenge ended up being when it was started, I want to say sort of selfish reasons, I guess, that Jen and I wanted to get more FFOs done and get them out of the drawer. And it's become this thing that's encouraging everyone to pull things out of the drawer and get them done. And I think it's wonderful. So let me tell you about Josie. I'm just going to go ahead and put the picture up now. What she explained to me was that in 1990, her and her husband were going to be expecting their first child. And obviously very excited about that. And she was planning to have a Beatrix Potter themed nursery. And she started this stitch of Peter Rabbit. And unfortunately, um, I think she said about two months after they ex were found out that they were expecting, they lost the baby. Now, I want to put in here because she did, she wrote it this way. Her and her husband went on to have five beautiful children <laughs> who are either all adults or close to being all adults at this point. Um, so after reading the first part and then hearing that or reading that next part, that made me feel better. So <laughs> not to take away from the hard, hurt feelings at first. So at the two month mark, when they learned that they lost the baby, she put this stitch away and my understanding, Josie, and I hope I have this right, that this is how much you had stitched on this project, um, Peter Rabbit. You put it away in a drawer and left it since 1990. And this is the part where I'm really honored. She is telling me that because of the FFO challenge, she was encouraged and had, I'm going to say the bravery to pull this out and to fully finish it. 
And what she explained to me is that she left it purposely unfinished. So she left it at the point that it was. Um, and if you look closely, you can see there are definitely some stitches not in there. But you can also tell that this is a Peter Rabbit, right? <laughs> I just want to tell Josie thank you again. I warned you, <laughs> this would make me extra emotional. I just, the only thing I could think about was how I wished that I could be sharing this with her in person and that I could just hug her because I don't know how else to summarize my feelings <laughs> besides hugging her and Now, what she tells me is that she gets to look at this all the time and feel happy with it. And it remind her, let's see, how did she word it? That it was the one who opened her heart to motherhood. So I thought those were beautiful words. All right, so let me tell you the details of the FFO because that's what I usually do. <laughs> I already explained to you, she told me it is uh, a Beatrix, Beatrix Potter and it's Peter Rabbit. She finished it unfinished and she used some Lady Dot Creates chenille. Um, let's see. She said the fabric is an art gallery fabric. She used some gauzy ribbon at the top and she had an old silver Peter Rabbit charm that she attached. And you can see that up at the top there. Um, and then she mounted everything to a board from Stitch Etc. And then she plans to put a library pocket on the back of this and put some notes on it. Um, much like many people would do with a big special project. And this may be small in size, but I would say this is a very big, important project. So congratulations, Josie, on getting this out. Thank you for sharing it with me. And thank you for letting me share with everyone else who's watching. Let's talk quilting now. I finished my cured celebration quilt top. And I'm going to show a picture of that, but not yet. <laughs> so we're going to talk about it a little bit before I show that picture. Uh, here is the, I'm going to call it the chart picture. So this is the Stitch Pink Quilt Along Kit. And I want to say it was from October of 2020. Yes. And I purchased the whole kit from Fat Quarter Shop. And as I'm, let's see, I'm not sure how to do this because I want to insert a bunch of pictures and talk at the same time. So, it might be a little wonky. <laughs> I'm going to start by, I'm just going to pop pictures in here of each of the 30 quilt blocks that I made. And um, hopefully I can sort of coordinate that with how I'm talking. Or, you know what, I'm just going to talk and I'm going to put them in and they're going to rotate through all 30 of them. And, um, and I'll just explain some things as I'm talking. So I, well, I don't know. Have I explained my cured celebration reason? I don't think so. Okay. So, I mean, I have in the past. Let me go back to it a little bit. In 
February of 2016, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was 42 at the time. And boy, during that process, I had never heard how young I was so much in a really long time. <laughs> uh, no family history, so it was a big shock. It was found through a routine mammogram. So if you are behind on your mammograms, you haven't gotten one yet, and you should, go get one. And so that was February. I was diagnosed March 16th of 2016. So 3-16-16 is my cancer-free date. Um, Jeff and I discussed everything and decided that the best plan for our family and me <laughs> was that I would have, I guess they would have called it a radical decision to have a bilateral mastectomy and I had reconstruction, which went on for the rest of that year through the process. I won't bore you with all of those details. Now I was, I consider that myself lucky. I didn't at the time, now looking back, I consider myself lucky. We found it very early and I was originally diagnosed at stage one. After my mastectomy, they actually said that it possibly could have been a stage zero. Um, because I chose the bilateral mastectomy, I had no radiation, and because nothing had traveled to any lymph nodes, I had no chemotherapy. And you'll have to forgive me for forgetting, but let's just say what it is. I'm blocking out the name of the medication that was discussed that I was gonna to need to take. Um, the oncologist even consulted with some sort of group of doctors and decided that it wasn't, I wouldn't receive enough benefit to outweigh the possible side effects of taking that medication. So I didn't even have that. Essentially, I had a bilateral mastectomy and I recovered from that and my reconstruction and that was it. <laughs> that's all I did. <laughs> um, so that's why I consider myself lucky. And so that was 2016. In July of 2021, I had a follow-up appointment with my oncologist had had many. <laughs> this was the last time I saw her. And she told me that she considered me cured. And she said how happy she was to be able to tell me that because she almost never gets to say that to anyone. And I think I remember early on in the process that I was told that I would probably never be cured but she used that word. And then she also said, but you keep track of everything. And if you ever, ever need anything you contact my office immediately. So, so about five and a half years later, I was told I was cured. Well, I had been eyeing this quilt and decided that was gonna be my celebration. And by the way, I'm still free of cancer and we still monitor things and keep track of it. But, um, wow, I didn't know this video was gonna get so emotional. <laughs> so I've been showing you my blocks here as I'm talking. And this is, that's why I'm calling this my cured celebration quilt. 
If you've watched me before, you know that I love basic gray fabrics. Those are one of my favorites. And so that was the other reason why I loved this kit so much was it was using the basic gray grunge line of fabrics. Now, in the blocks that I'm showing you, there are two that I changed and decided not to do. They were applique blocks and I wanted all pieced blocks. So I swapped out a couple of those and just found other, all the blocks are a finish of 12 inch blocks. And so I just found other blocks that were free online that I thought fit with the style of the quilt. The finished quilt top here. And now I can talk about that. I'm not showing it in person because it's so big I can't fit it in the video. So a picture will do the job for now. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I showed you the blocks. There are 30. So it's a five by six setting. And the original kit had you sew all the blocks together without any kind of a border or sashing or anything. I made the decision to add sashing in between each block because of all of the points on this, I thought it would help me save my sanity in terms of being able to put this together. <laughs> because when I was building each individual quilt block, <laughs> there were times that were a little rough, we'll say it that way. <laughs> so sashing and then there's one just plain white border around the whole thing to frame it. Um, let's see, I left out the part where, when I worked on this. So I don't remember when I actually did the very first block. If I had to guess, I'm gonna jump back to October of 2021, but I would have had to look it up and I forgot to look it up. So that's me, my guess, I did one block. And then I decided that it was a really big pain to cut out each individual block and then sew it to then have to cut out the next block and so on. So I took some time and I organized all of the individual blocks and cut all the pieces for everything. And I think I did that around in that October time frame. And then I put it away because I was just overwhelmed. So it sat in a drawer and then March Madness of 2022, this quilt top was part of my voting process. It did not win, it did not win March Madness. I don't remember now, there were, I'm sure it, it won at least one round. I don't remember though, for sure. Anyway, but I decided, okay, I'm gonna get these blocks done this month any I just needed a push. And that's what I did. I actually finished all the blocks in March of 2022. By the end of that month, I had all the blocks done. And I had intended on sewing the quilt top together soon after. Well, again, it got put in a drawer. I don't remember why. Maybe I was overwhelmed again. I don't remember. Um, I'm sure that's probably what it was. And then I just was busy with other things. So it sat in a drawer. Fast forward to the beginning of 2023 and the talk of our FFO challenge 2023. Now this was not one of my projects that were in my sort of priority list of things I wanted to fully finish in 2023, but it was in the back of my mind and I hoped to feel motivated to get it out. And after, well, actually during March Madness this year, 
when I was working on so many projects and I was getting so many done, I kept thinking, you know, I should try to get that out and at least work on it a little. And I'm going to say I'm pretty sure that Jen and I talked about it at some point, And I don't remember if it was in March or when exactly. And she asked if I planned on getting it out. And I had been thinking about it. And I thought April would be the perfect time to pull it out. And at least measure my squares. And see where I'm at. And maybe I could at least start to put it together. I was trying not to put too much pressure on myself. Well... I pulled it out on a Monday and measured, and I said, all I'm gonna do is measure the squares, see where I'm at. All of my squares measured almost spot on, which they needed to measure 12 and a half, and almost all of them. I trimmed a couple, just a smidge in a couple spots. There was one that was larger than 12 and a half inches, but not by a lot. I don't remember the exact measurements, but my coach, Jen, <laughs> was helping me and I had talked to her about it and she thought that I could, you know, fit it in to my sashing plans. Turns out she's right. <laughs> it worked. And so that was on a Monday and I thought, well, so the next day, I'm just gonna start trying to work on it. So I'm gonna get the sashing cut. And I think I started sewing a little bit. And I have to say, it took a lot longer than I had thought originally to put it all together. To be honest, I know I'm crazy, but I really thought that I would get the entire top assembled in about a day or two. Maybe it would take me two days. Well, Monday I measured everything and then I worked like crazy on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw I was sharing bits and pieces here and there on my progress. I worked really hard all four of those days, most all of the day long. <laughs> and I got it done. And I have to tell you, so I know I'm talking about this a lot for a long time, but this was really such a special, important project for me because it wasn't what it represented was my celebrating being cured, right? Um, but it also was a big challenge for me I didn't realize when I picked out this quilt what a challenge the sampler quilt was. <laughs> so each kind of step that I um, succeeded at made me feel especially accomplished. I'm like, oh wow, I got that done. I, oh wow, I did that, you know? And during those four days of that sewing, each step, even though it was taking me so much longer than I had anticipated, um, I felt so accomplished and so much success. And I'm gonna share a quick little story about me that I don't think I've shared with you guys. So, um, yeah, I just wanna make sure I have the dates right in my head. So in 2015, I had decided that I was, gonna start running for exercise. And um, it actually went back further than that. In 2013, I decided, because I was having a big, big birthday that year, that I was going to be able to run a 5K before I turned 40. And, um, and I did accomplish that. And then uh, I think I injured myself, and so it kind of got set aside. So then fast forward into 2015 and I decided that I wanted to pick it back up again. And in true Michelle fashion, because I can't seem to do anything just a little or part way, 
I decided I needed to run a half marathon and train for it. And Jeff decided he would do it with me, which was very fun. So we didn't always run together, but our long training runs on the weekends, we did together. So, and then we did the half marathon together, which we did. And it corresponded in September, which was when our birthdays were. And not significant birthdays by any means that particular year, but it was an accomplishment. And all that running that I did, I always felt such a um, rush of endorphins, right? And every time we did these long training runs, man, I felt like I was just almost invincible. It was so powerful. And then, you know, we accomplished the half marathon and um, oh, I, I don't even know how to explain how I felt. I think the, this, this will tell you how I felt. Okay, so that was September, late in September of 2015. And um, by the end of 2015, Jeff and I signed up for and planned to run a marathon. And we were going to do that in 2016. Do you hear some corresponding dates? So basically on New Year's Day of 2016, we signed up to run a marathon, which was going to be in October, I believe. And well, things changed really quickly, right? <laughs> so, uh, Someone had different things in mind. I had a different sort of marathon that I ended up needing to participate in. All of this to explain to you, you know, my cancer sidelined that sort of goal that I had. But what I realized when I was finishing my quilt top, when I was getting ready to sew the last row together, I felt the strength of emotions in that endorphin rush that I felt from running. And I, it really, I don't even know how to explain it or process it exactly, but I wanted to share that with you because that's how important this quilt top is. And I think sometimes, well, we all, should be doing these things because we enjoy them and they bring us a lot of joy and I am all for that. I just, some of these projects are very emotional and wow, like, I didn't realize that when I think about the joy I feel of all of these things. So, uh, will I be doing this difficult of a quilt anytime soon again? No way. <laughs> but now that I can look at it and see what I did, wow. And honestly, I had it laying on my floor to take pictures, obviously. And um, and I would just look at it and just, and I could look at pieces and parts of it and go, I did that. And do any of you feel that way about when you accomplish some of these craft things? <laughs> that they're difficult. And well, not d challenging is the word I want to use. And to feel so accomplished, I don't know. I just looked at that quilt top in awe. So my plan with this is to get it professionally quilted. And then I'll need to bind it. And then eventually I'll get to add it to my FFO total for the year. <laughs> so that is my very long talk about my quilt top. <laughs> Thank you for listening to it. I've shared an FFO, even if it wasn't my own, but I did share an FFO. <laughs> I shared a finish, which was my quilt top. Now let's talk about... One whip is what I have to share today, but it's a big one. I'll start with the chart picture. So it is the um, Teresa Kogut's Faith, Hope, Peace, Love sampler. 
Sorry for the glare. I'm trying to not have too much. And I think before I show you where I'm at, I want to talk about it a little bit. And so I'm going to show you where I started first. So that's what's going to come up here. This is where I was at the beginning of April. Now, after March Madness, I decided that I wanted to pull this big project out and see where I could get on it. And so I came up with a plan. And I, I know that I've talked about this in a previous video because I have a comment that I'm going to share with you about it. <laughs> but for those of you that don't remember, I've been trying to work on this. And as you're seeing the picture there sitting, um, I decided that I was going to stitch this. My goal is to have it finished and framed by October 10th of this year, which marks the 25th anniversary of Jeff's and my first date. And yes, we celebrate that <laughs> because we consider that sort of our inseparable date because from that day we we're inseparable. <laughs> and so that's the background of this. So it was a fairly important project to me. Um, it's also probably by far the largest stitch that I've ever started. And so that was another reason I wanted to work on it. Now what you're seeing here is probably about what I showed, I think, the last time I shared it on Flosstube. And I talked to you that time that I figured out that I was not enjoying the stitch very much and it felt like a struggle. And that was because I finally figured it out. I was one linen thread off. So I was having a really hard time and I think that Stitching that way on a piece of linen didn't make a huge difference as long as I was using my Q-snap. Now that I'm stitching in hand is where I felt that it was a really big struggle, especially if I wanted to do any sewing method, it was really hard. And because um, my thread would almost get lost in the linen sometimes. And it was hard for me to count stitches. So. That's where I was. And now I'll show the next picture, which you can see that I tore out um, the right side border that I had started working on. And the suggestion that I went with, I had several, and I appreciate everyone's input on this and giving me ideas on how I could sort of fix it. Um, came from Linda and what she um, suggested to me was to unpick the that right side border which I'm showing you here I had taken it out so she said to unpick that border and then this was the key part for me that felt like a light bulb went off is that she then said to move one fabric thread to the right and then move my way back over to the left of the um, sampler and get back to it. And then you can make adjustments based on you now have one extra fabric thread in my thing. So here's my why are words so hard sometimes? <laughs> that was where I started from after I unpicked that right side border. And here is where I am today. I've made a little progress. Oh, I'm so proud of it and it is looking so beautiful. Um, so basically, I have the full top third done. And 
that was my goal for April once I got going on this. And the reason why, um, and I will talk about what uh, my mania plans are a little bit in a few minutes. But my goal was to get that top third done. And then I thought maybe with mania, I could get this, the middle third done. And now I'm feeling like, oh, it is possible that this is going to be finished on, for my goal, <laughs> which is October 10th. I am having so much fun stitching this now that I made that adjustment. So I only tore out this little, I think I had two of these flowers done and maybe like this pink or something. Wait, yes, that's three. Right. <laughs> I left this top border alone and I left all of this alone. Mm. I think, hmm, I did something over here. Let me see if I look at it. Can I remember? Okay, this is what I think I did. I think I had just the stem of this flower here done. And I tore out or unpicked the, I shouldn't say tore out because that, Sounds very aggressive. <laughs> I unpicked it gently. <laughs> so I unpicked this stem and I moved it over one thread to the right so that this flower would then be in the correct position based on how I want to stitch. So I had this cat and obviously this urn thing and flowers done and this dog. And then I had a little of this done. So by kind of adjusting this flower and then my border here is all correct. And then from here over is all correct, except for that top, right? It's off one fabric thread. And if you looked very closely, you can see in this, in here, I have a couple of places where what I did instead of tearing out too much of, and again, there I am with that aggressive terminology, I un, instead of unpicking some of it, I left it. And what I did was I would... I made a couple of X's that I made them three fabric threads wide and two fabric threads tall, if that makes sense. So they're a little longer horizontally than a regular X. Um, but then I could adjust and everything could line up. So then my, you know, my white flowers are on their stems, correctly because I don't if you can look there you can see where the stem goes right in between the white stitches for those flowers. So I just adjusted that in a couple spots and honestly who am I? Because <laughs> that is not me at all. So um, I want to say thank you again to Linda. I've already told her thank you. <laughs> But I'm going to say thank you to Linda again for giving me the suggestion. And it, it was almost like someone was giving me permission to try it where I couldn't, I wasn't able to do that for myself, if that makes sense. Um, and so that helped me a lot. And just that key of her telling me move one fabric thread to the right. So then I had a little extra space in here. So then I could make those stitches just a little bit bigger and I wouldn't be trying to overlap anything. Um, and it worked out. So I think I might have unpicked maybe one of these dark green leaves. It was just a few stitches. Again, just to help me. 
So that's where I'm at. So obviously I'm over a third of the way done. I think this chart is nine pages and I for sure have three complete pages done. And I'm just really enjoying it. I Now I'm having a little bit of trouble because I feel like, okay, Michelle, put it away for a little while and work on some other things. But then I'm enjoying it so much I want to keep going. So with the stress of the house construction, <laughs> like I said, to keep my sanity, I am putting X's in things. And this is a real comfort for me right now because... I have it out already and I'm working on it and I've made so much progress and it's all corrected now. I can count from these flowers, this border, this flower here, and I can line everything up now. I have all my sort of checkpoints as I'm going along to make sure I'm counting correctly. And I don't, I'm not fussing with, you know, sort of the fudging spots so and don't you love her dress oh the lady's dress is so cool oh I did make one little change um oh I didn't even tell you what I'm stitching this on or what the flosses are or anything <laughs> let's talk about that I am stitching this on 40 count affogato from fiber on a whim I am using called for flosses, which are a mix of classic color works, weak dye works, and DMCs. I made one substitution, and that is for the white shade in the chart. I am using <laughs> one of my favorites, classic color works, toasted marshmallow. The, I don't remember what the called for is, but it did not work with my fabric choice. So I needed to brighten it up a little bit. And that way I could use my fave, Toasted Marshmallow. I said 40 count, right? I think so. And if I'm stitching on 40 count, that means I am using one floss thread over two linen threads. And the other... So one floss substitution is all. And the other change that I made to anything on the chart is the man's hair. I used the darkest shade in the called for flosses for his hair. It was originally supposed to be sort of this yellowish color, which is would make him look blonde. And Jeff is not blonde. He has very dark hair. Well, it's getting lighter by the day. But so is mine. So it's just that mine's disguised. <laughs> anyway, Jeff has dark hair, not blonde. And I have dark hair, but not quite as dark as his. So I used that darker shade for his hair. And I'm really tickled with how that looks. I think it looks really good. Um, but yeah, so that is where I'm at. I will I will be working on this some more. I'm not sure for how long. I don't know. We'll see. We'll talk my plans here a little bit. And uh, so we'll have an idea. So that is Faith, Hope, Peace, Love from Teresa Kogut. We have seen an FFO, we've seen a finish, and we've seen a whip today. So let's talk some plans. The Other than working on my sampler, um, I want to organize my mania plans. So I have an idea of what I want to do, but I need to get everything organized. And um, I'm going to say... Thank you again to Jen from Two Tall Stitchers for this idea. So in 2021 in May, I decided to do my own sort of mania plans. And I did a new start for every day in the month of May. Well, for those of you that know me at all, that was a bit much for me. 
it was fun to have those projects ready and started and I could pull anything out and pick up and start stitching on it. But I also, I don't like to run that many whips and I tend to, once I pick something up, I stitch on it until it's done because I don't know how else to be. <laughs> so it was fun to try it. I just know that's not really what I wanna do. And Jen and I were having a talk about mania and I said I wanted to do something, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And so she told me what her plan was and I think she told me she did this yet last year too. So her plan is 10 projects for three days each. And I think her plan was five whips to pull out for three days each, and then she would have five new starts. And so I was kind of looking at that as my rough framework. So I am gonna do 10 projects, three days each. I don't know if I will have five whips. I think I have on my list right now, three whips. That would mean seven new starts. Again, I need to organize and make a plan. And I plan, I'm gonna lay it out and decide what three days are assigned to each project. I will do three consecutive days for each project. So those are my mania plans. 10 projects, three days each for the month of May. And um, so my plans for this video are getting that organized. And I can get started on May 1st with whatever I decide to start with on May 1st. That's a big part of sort of my plan besides working on this sampler. The other thing that I would like to get done is I've only done one FFO for the month of April so far. And if you remember, it's B is for bunny. Like I got it done right after March Madness. And I would like to get my May wordplay, which there's April. Um, I'd like to get May wordplay fully finished before the end of the month. One, so that I can have it for May. But also, then I would have two FFOs in the month of April. And that was my original goal, was two FFOs per month. Now, I understand I far exceeded the 24 <laughs> that I was planning to get done this year. But I think it's still doable for me to get at least a couple done each month, even or make sure I get at least two done each month. So that's what I want to do. So I want to get that May word play out and fully finished in the next week. Uh, but that means setting down the sampler and not stitching on it for a little while while I work on finishing that up. <laughs> or that FFO. We'll see how it works out. Again, April was all about not putting pressure on myself because I did so much in March. And look at what I'm accomplishing in April already. So I'm pretty happy with that. That wraps up what I wanted to share with you today. Thanks again for participating in the FFO Challenge 2023 and please continue to do so. As always, I will say thank you so much for sharing your time with me, and I will talk to you soon.